Hi, welcome to the fifth of 12 videos that covers how to use the ProVal Smoothness Assurance Module. This fifth video will cover Section 5 as covered in our guide to using the ProVal Smoothness Assurance Module. Section 5 is titled Using Templates. So, what are templates? Templates are settings that we can save in ProVal to prevent from having to enter these values every time we open up the software. So when you first get the software, it's going to have some default settings set into it, and they're likely not going to match what you need for your specific project, so you're going to want to set your settings. So once we set the settings, we're going to use this template button to save them. So what are the settings that we're going to set? Well, we're going to have to set the settings in the right quality index. So we're going to click this drop down here and make sure we select IRI. And we're going to set these settings below here. So here we have an existing file where we're going to analyze an existing asphalt concrete surface so we're going to assume that we have to develop a grinding plan for to address pre-paving grinding so we're going to set our local roughness threshold to 180 so in Pro ProVal the short continuous text is synonymous with localized roughness because localized roughness is defined as the, the average of a 25 foot moving segment of pavement the average roughness so we'd set 180 here um, we're we're also going to have to set a value that represents our mean roughness index even though we're looking at one wheel path here when we select IRI we're going to set 75 in our fixed interval so the mean roughness index is defined as the average roughness over a 528 or tenth mile fixed interval of pavement so we'd set 75 here and with the Caltrans specs, we don't have anything that's synonymous with long continuous, but typically you just set these to the same as your fixed interval. Okay, and then we're, we're going to select this drop down and change it to MRI. Now we'd be looking at both the left and right wheel path. So when we select the MRI, this part of the screen is going to change to the left and right. And we'll set those same settings. Then under the comparison portion of the screen, we want to have our profile view shown below our roughness plots. So we want to compare that profile with the roughness plot. So we have to set the profile view. If we don't do this, we're not going to see these profile views bef when we need to see them. So this is one of the things you want to make sure you set. So when we're looking at profiles, profiles get plotted using some filters if we plotted the profiles without using filters you wouldn't see any relief to the the vertical terrain and it, even though there's a there's a bump you, you would not wouldn't be exaggerated enough so we have to apply a filter so that we can view the actual changes in the vertical changes or the roughness now when we when we set these filters we, it doesn't affect the localized roughness just how they're viewed so we're going to set the butterworth high pass filter and we'll go through and do an example of this then we're going to go to another screen and now we're going to set our grinding dimensions that we talked about in one of the earlier videos so you know we we talked about all these except for the short cutoff wavelength i, I didn't mention this but this 0.82 is essentially looks at the co tire contact area under the wheels on the grinder and it will average you know the elevations over 10 inches of the grinder or 0.82 feet so when it comes up with the surface of the the surface elevation of that pavement at that location so we talked about the tandem spread w spread in the wheelbase and head position we didn't talk about the maximum grinding depth number so when you open up ProVal this defaults to 0 0.30 inches and if we're analyzing roughness for an asphalt concrete surface, we limit the grinding to no more than 25% of what that layer thickness is that we're putting down. So if we've calculated a tenth of asphalt, that would be 1.2 inches. So if we look at 25% of 1.2 inches, it ends up being three tenths of an inch. So these values that default, that default in here are set to 0.3 and they're equivalent to our 25% depth limitation on a tenth overlay if we had a thicker overlay and we wanted this grinding only to this warning only to show when we were going over that 25 percent we change this value okay so let's just jump into the demo here so here i have it that it, an existing file loaded up and we're in the smoothness assurance module like we can tell by looking at this we're in the input section of the smoothness assurance because this is inputs here now 
the text here corresponds to whatever I selected in this drop down. So we have inputs selected right now. So it says inputs here. If I changed it to one of these other items in the screen, that text would change it. So we're going to go ahead and set up a template for our, an existing asphalt concrete surface that has to get ground for prepaved grinding. So we're going to set the short continuous to 180, which is synonymous with local roughness. And we're going to set the other values to 75. Even though there is no mean roughness index requirements for prepaving grinding, okay. And now we want to do that on this other screen also. So when I click this drop down here, there's a couple more selections. We don't use HRI, that stands for half right index. I believe Colorado uses that. We use IRI and MRI, we don't use RN, which is right number. So we're only going to select IRI or MRI. When I select IRI, I can look at both wheel one wheel path at a time. When I select MRI, I can see, see both of them at one time. I can't, I can't select them independently with MRI because that's the mean roughness index of both wheel paths. So you'll note that when I changed this to 180, it didn't change the values on this screen to 180. I have to do this independently. So this is one mistake that I think a lot of people probably make is not to realize that these are two separate screens. So we're going to set both those to. 180, 75, 75 for we still it's still there so now we want to make sure that we can see our profiles below our roughness plots so we're going to select this drop down and we have three choices we can do a profilograph simulation we can compare the profile which is what we want or we can do a rolling straight edge um, if we wanted to look at a rolling straight edge we could select that I'm just pointing this out and our specs do call for a 12 you know in cases calls for a 12 foot straight edge spec so if we didn't have if we had inertial profiles but we didn't have an IRI spec for a section road we could do we could run this rolling straight edge report and you know find locations that we would should go physically check with a straight edge in the field so now when I if I do that if I enter 12 feet when I get the report, it's going to basically show me the deviations at the midpoint of a 12 foot straight edge if I were to slide it down the project or down the wheel path one inch at a time. So if I'm on a bump where I could balance the straight edge and there is a quarter inch gap under each end, each ends of the straight edge, I would see a 0.25 value on this report. It's, it's going to be another plot. If there is a gap under the center of that straight edge of a quarter inch, we'd see minus 0.25 inches. So that's how that works. And then this profilograph simulation, you could model a profilograph if you wanted to. But we want to just show the profile, so we're going to select profile here. Now, we also want to set this filter setting. So we want this profile to be viewable so, to the extent where we can see where the roughness is. If we don't set this profile, if we leave it as none, we may have a difficult time looking at the profiles and deciding where the actual bumps are. So we're going to click on this blue text, none, it's hypertext, and we'll get a choice. So we're going to change this to the Butterworth High Pass Filter. We don't really care about all these other choices, just the Butterworth High Pass Filter. And that defaults to 100 feet, and if we select 100 feet, I found that even the very minor deviations in the pavement look like big bumps. If you select 300, it's a good value. It makes most of the bumps that are significant stand out. If I put 1,000 in there, it makes everything look really flat. So 300 is a number that's been experimented with that seems to work well. And I originally settled on that number after you know listening to a f quite a few people from other states. That seems to be what they use also. So. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and close that. So now we have the Butterworth High Pass filter set to 300. Okay, so now we have all these settings set on our input screen, but there's some other settings that we want to set on our grinding screen. So I need to get back over to, I, I want the screen to say Smooth Assurance in Grinding rather than Inputs. I need to be able to click on this and select Grinding. Right, it's not, right now it's not activated. This software requires that I analyze the roughness first before I can get to that drop down. Now I can click that drop down and select grinding. Okay, so when I first get to this grinding screen, this is where we enter the grinding dimensions. We talked about that in an earlier video. We talked about the max grinding depth. 
Well, when we first open this up, this thing defaults to either an 18 foot or 25 foot wheelbase, and these values it can't change. The 18 foot would just both the 18 and 25 foot wheelbases default to a head ratio of 0 0.50 halfway back. If you're working on a most projects, you'll find that typically the grinders are roughly 14, 15 feet long with a head ratio of about three quarters of the way back. And to be consistent with what we're providing in the what we state in the manual, we're recommending if you're doing a prepaving grinding estimate, you don't know what your grinder dimension is, so you're going to have to make some assumptions to set the ratio at 0 0.78 and set the wheelbase to 14.5 feet and we'll leave these other dimensions alone. So that is now our custom setting. So we want to save that. So now that we have all these settings saved, I could go back to the input screen and see that we still have them. I'll come back to the grinding screen, still, still, still see that I have the custom settings. I want to save all these. So we're going to go to the templates button and save it. So right now there's none saved in there. So we're going to save a new one, click new. Now we need to come up with a name and we saved, we set our localized roughness value to 180. So I'm going to say name this 180 with a 75 for the mean roughness. And then we, because these settings for the grinder get saved and here we're going to say 14.5 for the length of the grinder. And then we'll put even put 0 0.3 cuz that that's our maximum grind depth. It doesn't matter what you name this. It, this is just when I see that my list of names, I'll know this is has to do with localized roughness for 180 and it had to do with the grinder that was 4 and a half, 14 and a half feet. I don't want to pull up the 14 and a half foot grinder if I find out later on, you know, the grinder that's going to be on the job is a 25 footer or an 18 footer. I'm going to want to either change that custom grinder setting or So anyways, that's what I want to do. I'm, that's the naming convention I use and you can use whatever you want but, but you want to make it make sense when you see it. Okay and then I want this one to pop up every time I load the software up without me having to select it so I'm going to say make that default and then there's another selection here that defaults to 250 defaults to being checked. You want to leave that checked. That's a 250 millimeter filter and what that does is it looks at the roughness when when the quarter car model gets run it assumes the it looks at the average over 250 millimeters or 10 inches of what that terrain would be is what the quarter car model sees so we're going to say okay now we have that setting set in our template so if we go back up there we'll see that new name i could change it back to the original the 9090 if i wanted to i don't want that i want the one i set there so i'm going to apply that so now when we say analyze We can go to the short continuous plot and we'll see that our profile plots below. The reason that this profile plots below down here is because we went to the input, input screen and asked for the profile plot. If I wanted the straight edge plot for a 12 foot straight edge, I could analyze that again and navigate back to the short continuous. I'll see the short continuous roughness up here and I'll see my surface deviations for a 12 foot straight edge. You know, we can zoom in to the 10th mile. We want to do that up here first and then sink it. But we can see the deviations of what we would see under a straight edge. So this would be a bump when it goes up that high. That's That would be where the straight edge would be roughly, looks like 1 point maybe 8 or something. I could put my cursor on there and read it off over here what that value is. I could zoom in and make it more accurate or I can have it show my profile actually we'll just go back to this because that'll that'll apply that profile back to the way it was I could have went back to that screen and clicked profile and we'll look at short continuous we can see the short continuous down here so to jump ahead a little bit we can go to the grinding screen and click auto grind and it'll come up with a list of grinds it thinks we need and then grind them by clicking the grind button Now we can go back to the short continuous plot and see, you know, every location where it ground, we can see the change in the, the IRI before and after, and we can, if we zoom in, we can see the change in the surface drain. We can look at the 10th mile, sync it up, 
we can see the roughness changed quite a bit where there's some grinding going on. And where there was no grinding going on, the roughness didn't change. But see the roughness change and the, the, the new grades. So that's the end of this module. We'll move on to the next module.